Hi, it's Matt here. So this is our Hyundai Ioniq EV. This is um, six years old now, it's done 102,000 miles or so. In this video, what I'm going to try to address is sort of bust a myth, something that I see gets commented quite often on the net and often on my videos, particularly this time of year in winter. And what people say and repeat a lot is EVs are hopeless in the winter. And if you get stranded in traffic, uh, your EV is going to run out of power. And some people go as far as saying in snow, your EV is going to kill you. So that's what I'm going to try to address in this video. What I'm going to do is run this with the heating on and just leave it for hours and hours and see how long it lasts. So let me just get in and start this up. So let me just turn the radio off. So yeah, this car's done 101,670 miles down there. So the time is now 2.58, is that right? Uh, yes, 14.58, I wonder whether the clocks have not been changed. Anyway, the time's now three o'clock in the afternoon. The battery is fully charged and I'm going to put the heating on. I'm gonna set it to 19 degrees uh, this is a cold car, uh, it hasn't been run today and it's currently 9 degrees outside. Um, so there's a lot of heating has got to be done in here. But I'm going to run that now and basically walk away from the car and leave it and see how much energy that is going to use by the car running, leaving it live and generating that heat. So what I'm doing is simulating being stuck in a traffic jam or in snow in the winter. Obviously, we haven't got really cold temperatures outside because it has warmed up here. Two weeks ago, it was minus 10 or so here, but uh, now it's plus nine. But anyway, I can't do anything about the outside temperatures, but um, this isn't a scientific test and it would be possible to do it because you've got different size fuel tanks, different amount of fuel in your diesel or petrol tank and different size battery packs on electric vehicles. But the general consensus of these people that really don't like the idea of electric vehicles is that the, your EV is going to leave you stranded if you get stuck in a motorway um, accident and traffic jam or you get stuck in snow. My feeling is, I haven't done this before, but my feeling is an EV is going to probably outlast a petrol vehicle if you're just sat there on tick over effectively obviously there's no tick over an EV because there's no engine but you're sat here without the motor running and you're just running the dash the electronics radio and the heating I think they're going to last longer than a petrol or diesel so that's what we're going to look at so what I am going to do is leave the radio running but um, obviously I don't want a YouTube playing any music now so or we've got talk radio on at the moment but anyway so yeah i'm going to leave the dab radio running volume down on minimum so it's not picked up on this video leave the heating on um and what we can do on these uh just to remind myself where it is we can look at energy consumption um long time since I've looked at this in these where is the energy consumption no it is um, ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Uh, there it is under battery so it shows us here that the motor ie the driving is using 0 kilowatts the climate control is currently using one kilowatt because it is heating up now so I suspect that will drop once it gets to its 20 degrees or 19 degrees and the electronics is using half a kilowatt and what that is is the dash the radio all the electronics in the car there's many ECUs there's 30 or 40 ECUs in a car and while that is running they're all powered and doing their thing the 12 volt battery is also being charged um, and obviously there's a lot of electronics under the bonnet uh, and all of that is live and being powered uh, and all of that energy has got to come from that 400 volt DC traction battery under the floor so that is all of that so obviously with an EV most of the energy is used from uh, by the electric motor driving you but when you're stationary sat still it's just your 
the electronics that the car uses, which is no different to a petrol or diesel, to be honest, and your climate control. So that's where it does differ a little bit because a petrol or diesel vehicle with a combustion engine produces heat when it burns fuel. And that heat gets pumped through to the cabin, heats the water up in the heater, and it gives you heat. So heat is a byproduct of burning the fuel. But with an electric vehicle, obviously you've got no fire under the bonnet, you've got no engine, you have to make the heat. And the heat has to be made with an electric heater. So that's what this one kilowatt of energy is being used for at the moment. So that battery under the floor on this particular car is a 28 kilowatt hour battery because this is a generation one Ionic with the smallest battery. So modern EVs have much larger batteries. So this battery is half the size that you would get on a more modern electric vehicle. This car came out in 2016 and this particular one is six years old now. Um, the battery also is at 100% state of health. I've done videos on that before, so the battery hasn't lost any of its usable capacity. This still has 28 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. But the reason why I'm telling you all this about the battery is because for this test, this is obviously a small battery EV, being an older first generation electric vehicle. The newer cars, as I said, have batteries twice the size, so we're gonna perform much better than this test is uh, going to roll out as. Um, and the same goes with petrol and diesel vehicles, obviously. If you're stuck in a traffic jam or stuck in a snowstorm and you're stuck out on the road, the number of hours you can sit there without heat is purely going to be dictated by the amount of petrol or diesel you've got in your tank. So if your tank's nearly empty, you're going to run out very quickly. Um, so there's a lot of factors here, uh, but the blanket statement that EVs are going to kill you in the winter uh, just is, is untrue. It all depends on how much fuel you've got in your tank. Anyway, I'll stop waffling now. I'm going to get out and leave this running. It's three o'clock and we're going to see how long that takes with this vehicle fully running. The battery is fully charged there. The heating is on, all the fans are on and the radio is on as well. All the sort of things you're gonna have on when you're sat in a traffic jam or stuck on the motorway. But the main difference here is this vehicle isn't pumping fumes out at the back. And uh, obviously when you're pumping fumes out the back, the vehicles behind you are breathing it in. You're breathing in the fumes from the vehicles in front of you. And you're also breathing in some of the fumes from your own vehicle as well. So the main difference between an electric vehicle and a combustion engine vehicle is this isn't producing any emissions, which is killing us ultimately. Right, so that's running and I'll come back to it later. I would just add the daytime running lights there aren't on because on these, they only come on when it's in drive. Uh, whereas a lot of other cars, they're on all the time the, the vehicle is running, but on this, when you select park even if it's still running it turns off the front daytime running lights but they're all led anyway so the consumption of those is going to be absolutely minimal so it's now an hour and 10 hour and 15 minutes later or so as you can see the headlights are now on because it is getting dark uh, the fans are all going so the heating is still going full pelt and let's jump in The uh, battery up there is still looking pretty full. Uh, we're still drawing, well, we're drawing half a kilowatt still, just a little bit over. And the battery is at 98%. So yeah, clearly uh, gonna be leaving this for a long time. Uh, I'm going to turn the headlights off because I don't want those on. And if you were stuck in traffic, you wouldn't leave your headlights on anyway. If you were stranded as it were. So you clearly, I'm gonna to have to leave this all night. I don't think a test like this has ever been done. Uh, I have no idea how long this is gonna last until that battery uh, drops to nothing, until it runs out of its own electricity. Um, but anyway, it's nice and warm in here. It obviously has got up to the 19 degrees or so inside. Uh, it's still nine degrees outside. So uh, I'm going to leave this now and I guess I'll come back to this in the morning. 
So it's now been 19 hours since our imaginary occupants in there have been stranded in this electric car. Uh, I can hear the fans are still going. So yeah, it's still running. Uh, before I open it up and have a look, if you found this video useful or you liked it, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help. YouTube only promote videos which have likes and comments and engagement. And also subscribe to the channel if you're not and hit that little like button if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. So, uh, sorry for the glare, the sun is right in my face here this morning. So, there's the battery, it's obviously dropped as you would expect, but not as much as what most people would have thought. And yeah, it's dropped, um, it's now 57%, so it's dropped 42% in that time. So, um, and it's hot as well, 19 degrees in here. So if you were stuck in the snow, you probably wouldn't have it as hot as that anyway. But obviously it's not cold outside. Um, and actually temperature now is five degrees, so it has got colder since yesterday. But anyway, obviously a long time to go on this test, um, but you get the idea. But anyway, I'm gonna walk away from this and uh, obviously have to leave it running for another whole day. So yeah, obviously our uh, imaginary occupants there haven't frozen to death in the snow. It will be interesting to see how long this does actually keep running for. So it's now 10 past three the following day. So this car has now been running with the heater on for over 24 hours. And the battery is only at 47% state of charge. So it's now the third day, it's nine o'clock in the morning, so this car has now been running for 42 hours. However, it's very quiet, I can't hear the fans. So has it died? And yes, at some point overnight, this car finally has run out of power. It's a shame because I thought it would still be running this morning, but obviously the same as a petrol or diesel car, they're always gonna run out at some point. It all depends on how much fuel you've got in your tank or how much electricity you've got in your battery. So what we found with this vehicle is it used about 14 kilowatt hours for 24 hours of running. That's running the car with the radio and the uh, heater on. And uh, that's a relatively small amount of electricity um, in an EV. So the majority of EVs will have 50, 60, 70 kilowatt hour batteries and uh, obviously only using 14 kilowatt hours for 24 hours of running just goes to show that an EV is unlikely to leave you stranded without any heat if you've got to sit for many hours with the vehicle running with the heating on obviously and I suspect actually an EV will last longer than a combustion engine vehicle sat on tick over producing heat so uh, I hope that's completely busted that myth. It's something that does get repeated an awful lot on the internet, that EVs are gonna leave you stranded and you're gonna freeze to death if you're stuck in snow or ice. Obviously, it all depends on how much fuel you've got in your tank or how much electricity you've got in your battery. But uh, most EVs are gonna last for um, many many hours sitting running the heater and uh, obviously what I've shown here is depends how much fuel you've got of course but most EVs will run for days and days with the heater on and uh, obviously you're not stuck and stranded in cars for that long typically it's only a few hours I would much rather be stuck in an electric vehicle for many hours than a combustion engine vehicle it's likely to last longer but also it's quiet, so that's nice. But the most important factor, obviously, is it's not producing toxic and poisonous emissions out the back. So unfortunately, if there's a nice vehicle in front of you running on tick over, you will be breathing in the gases from that vehicle. But if you're sat on your own in a combustion engine vehicle with the heating on, it is gonna be drawing in those poisonous gases into the cabin, which is effectively a sealed box. Um, and some people might dismiss the importance of that, but then you've only got to look how people commit suicide. It's a saying the battery did finally run out on this, um, I suspect only a couple of hours ago. 
uh, because I was going to show you one other advantage of electric vehicles. So many electric vehicles have heated seats and heated steering wheels and that is a much more efficient way to warm yourself up. In this particular car it's also got heated seats in the back as well so all four passengers have a heated seat and, and it genuinely works. You can stay warm with the heated seats and that uses much less electricity. So on this car, because it showed you energy consumption, I was going to show you how little power the heated seats and heated steering wheel used. But obviously I can't do that now until this is recharged. Um, but so yes, if you were stuck in an electric vehicle and you had heated seats and heated steering wheels, then you probably wouldn't have the heating on or maybe just had it on a much lower and use the heated seats and the energy consumption from those is absolutely minimal and therefore the electric vehicle would keep you warm for days and days. I would say the energy consumption is certainly less than a quarter so you're looking at um, four times longer that your EV is going to sit there keeping the passengers warm. But obviously many combustion engine vehicles also have heated seats but the difference is you'll be running an engine on tick over to keep that 12 volt battery charged to run the heated seats and it's wasting an awful lot of fuel and is very inefficient. If you didn't run the engine that 12 volt battery would go flat pretty quickly. With an electric vehicle that 12 volt battery is being charged from the traction battery underneath but it's just a transfer of energy, you're not wasting energy. So an EV can run for days and days with the heated seats on and the 12 volt battery being charged. The one other thing I'll quickly address because I'm sure I'll get comments is obviously in this test it wasn't particularly cold outside. The first day it was 9 degrees, second day 5 degrees and I think overnight it was probably still about 5 degrees or, or 4 degrees something like that. So obviously this wasn't a test in snow or ice um, like you would typically be if you are stranded in those conditions. But with the heating set at 19 degrees, most of the energy consumption is getting the cabin up to temperature. Once it's at temperature, the heating kicks in and out to maintain that temperature. Obviously, there will be loss of heat through the glass and the panels, but the cabin is fairly well insulated and the escape of heat isn't going to be huge unless you're opening the door. So I don't think in reality it's going to make a huge difference, but it will make some difference, of course. So I hope that busts that myth that an EV is going to leave you stranded if you get stuck in traffic or even worse, get stuck in snow. Obviously, it depends on how much fuel you've got. No different to a combustion engine vehicle, but an electric vehicle will probably last for much longer and will certainly last for hours and hours with the heating on and most likely many days. And the most important thing is it's not poisoning you. So that's it. Hope you found this video useful. It's a shame this isn't still running this morning. I thought it might be. I suspect it only died a few hours ago. Uh, I should have maybe got out here a little bit earlier this morning. But anyway, if you found this video useful, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help. Also comment below and share it if you want to. That helps as well. And if, you, if you're not, please do subscribe to the channel and there are literally hundreds and hundreds of videos on the channel as well to educate you about electric vehicles if you want to have a look at those too. So I've got to get this charged up now and I didn't think about this because I didn't park it next to our wall charger. So I'm going to get the extension cable out and charge it with the portable charger.